I'm very pleased to welcome Magali from Benicasa. You have your mic. Can you present yourself in, uh, and what you do at Benicasa in uh, one minute, please? Thanks, Macarthur. So I'm Magali Guasso Becerril. I'm the founder and CEO of Benicasa. Uh, Benicasa is a platform of booking where you can book a, book, a room around the world. Uh, and it was created in 2007 based on an address book. It was my own address book. And I offered my friends to, to rent out their rooms in 60 countries. There were 100 at that time. And now we, ha we are 120,000 members. Thank you. Magali. Can you applause, Magali, please? <laughs> um, then we have Joel from uh, Itwis. Thank you. So I'm in Spain. We're a team of six. We're five in Israel. Where we were founded. Um, we launched in Spain a few months ago, and um, we started in the US a few days ago. And Eaglet is a online dining platform which here in France, you know, cooking, and uh, we operate the same philosophy. The Israeli and the Spanish cooking. <laughs> we have Philip from Wynet. Yeah, hello. Um, I found Wynet about a year ago. It's an iPhone app and website that enables you to borrow products from your friends and your friends only. Um, we believe that's about moments with your friends and uh, not about all the money. So it's all for free and you can see what your friends own. Ask them to have a coffee and uh, meet up again. Thank you. <laughs> and the last one, the beautiful Pona. <laughs> Pona from Drivey. Uh, hi everybody, so I founded the Drivey years ago it's a peer-to-peer -peer car rental platform and uh, so I started alone we are now five, uh, 15 people we are number one in Europe on this uh, on this market and uh, and that's it we have about uh, 8,000 uh, cars to rent everywhere in France we are operating in, Fra in France only for the time being thank you very much <laughs> so, the first question about creating a, a collaborative, collaborative startup is finally, what uh, does the word collaborative makes difference in the, your uh, in entrepreneurship? Uh, does anybody want to start with this question? Magali, maybe? Why always uh, me first? It's always me no, first. Uh, Yesterday because you're a girl. Because, because you're a girl. <laughs> That's not fair. Okay, I'm going to try to. Um, well, back in 2007, to be honest, I didn't uh, know that word, uh, collaborative consumption, I'm sorry. I uh, knew it two years ago, thanks to Anthony. Uh, so basically, um, it took me four years uh, before really um, uh, getting my community and my funds. Actually, it's the key factor is uh, money. And uh, so, the fact that uh, it is collaborative, I think um, really, I'm sorry, but didn't change anything in my issues, day-to-day uh, -to -day issues. I needed to fix my butt to solve my problems as uh, any entrepreneur and, uh, and to find my funds, to, so to find the right investors. Um, so I, it took me four years because uh, we, we were Pioneer in this market, and as a pioneer, when you uh, when you are in a, in a landscape where there's no model, I didn't know that I, Airbnb uh, existed. So um, I had to convince the investors, and uh, as there was no model, I, I needed to prove that uh, there was a market, and, and it was a huge market. And that is true that Airbnb helps a lot. So finally, for you, there's no main difference in the everyday life to be collaborative? <laughs> the thing is, um, I think the, the fact that the community is fan of your concept and that you bring trust between people, peer to peer, uh, 
helps because uh, you create uh, customers' loyalty, whereas if they're just customers based on money, it's not the same. You, you, you don't create added value on the long term. So I would say um, this, this can create added value on the long term. Philip, I can see you are taking notes. Maybe you want to add something. Well, to me, it was similar. I, I looked at, um, I had a marketplace before for eco clothing, and I tried to solve a problem there, which was where can I buy eco clothing or eco products? And with Wyona, it was the same. I basically thought, why do I buy stuff that my friends already bought? Um, and wouldn't it be great to see more, more of my friends' stuff? So I started the company out of my own vision, and then suddenly, uh, all this hype about collaborative consumption came up in the past 12 months, um, which I didn't really think of and which I didn't really um, <laughs> actually wanted to have. I just wanted to solve the problem for myself and now I'm suddenly uh, out there uh, with, uh, with a lot of people trying to solve similar problems or um, different approaches. Um, on the business side, I'm not sure if, it's, if it makes sense to, to do it more open source and not not spending all the money on, on developing um, everything on your own. Um, I believe that, that you could do way more <laughs> over there in, in the near future, but we're still like, we're all very at the beginning um, of this and it's going to be fun to see in the next three years. I mean, this is the first conference. Next year is probably going to be uh, double the people and double the value of everything. For now, we thought before, maybe you wanted to change the world collaborative, especially. Maybe not change the world collaborative, but try to not mix up everything. So for me, uh, for example, Wikipedia is definitely collaborative. Coding on GitHub, uh, if you do open source, is collaborative. Peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer car rental is, is not really collaborative. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, people selling service to each other. So it's definitely C2C, but I don't think there is, I think there is a bit of an abuse of the word uh, collaborative. So for us, it's more C2C, and C2C is very specific because you have two types of customer. You have a, a big problem of critical mass. You have to synchronize acquisition of supply and demand. Um, but they don't really collaborate in the, in the service. They, they, they do commerce. And I think it's, uh, it's not less good than collaboration. It's, uh, there is joy in, uh, in being customers. There is joy in, in simple commerce. And, uh, so I, I'm not too, too fond of the, of the world. Jay, you want to add something? Yeah, just one final point. It doesn't change the day to day. I have to agree. No, it's, still a, it's still a business. But um, I think it's, it's been a lot easier to build the community um, in this collaborative consumption space, but then to convert the mindset and the mentality from in collaborative consumption into the consumer, which is what every entrepreneur relies on. That's but the challenge. Let me react on what you just said. Uh, what difference do you make between uh, for one side, clients, and on the side, community. And what is the community when we are talking about clients? If you, if you have a product that uh, people can identify with and, and feel like they're part of, then the community and the clients, they're the same, the same thing. And uh, you can, you're not selling to them, you're creating a community which they want to exist. So rather than creating a product and trying to sell it to them, you're Providing a community for them to use as they want, providing a platform rather than a service. I don't, I don't agree. Okay, that's uh, cool. <laughs> I think there's a main difference between community and customers because uh, with the community, you, um, um, but I'm, I'm just uh, challenging you. Now, it's just because I think um, day to day we have the, the customers on the phone. And in Casa, we, are, we have the customer service uh, seven days a week. Um, even uh, the day off. So we have them on the phone, they're, they're really demanding, picky, uh, litigious, because it is based on trust transaction. Because they want, because the, their first motivation is money. It's money. So it's, it's service, but it's money. They, they, they have extra money, so they want to share, it, that's for sure. But they, they win, they earn money. So they're really demanding and the community is not 
that's demanding and you can um, turn the community into fans, into ambassadors. Uh, we, are, we, we really make a difference between our travelers and our hosts. Um, the, the hosts are really demanding because they bring a service, a, an exchange of money. Uh, the travelers, yeah, they're, they're more um, open-minded. They're, they're going to uh, uh, bring some ideas to your community. And they're gonna uh, bring you feedbacks, also the hosts. And, um, and with, um, with, with the, the customers, you, you have to be very professional with the community too, but it's different. Um, it's you, you just have a community without the business model, they're not going, going to be that uh, picky. So for you, there are two sides, the community and the clients. When, when you bring money uh, into the system, it, it's sure that you're going to change the, the thing. Okay. For me, it's different because with Wyoming, there's no money involved. So um, I see you guys, you all three make money via the transaction, right? Uh, I don't. Uh, for me, it's uh, for me. Every user is a potential. Um, keep 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 so, talking. So it should, it should work now. Yeah. Uh, every uh, like every every user is um, is equal. Um, so it's all about the community, and um, we're basically we're based in Hamburg, and we build a lot around Hamburg and Berlin to basically work with those and improve the product. Uh, but we don't. I get a lot of phone calls and emails uh, that we haven't wrote yet, um, uh, and that is a problem. And I get a lot of feedback on the on the product. Uh, but thank God, there's no transactions because then I would get even more uh, customer support needed. And Pauline, yeah. I think we have a community of customers. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> so do you, do you, uh, because my next question is, how do you manage to build a community for my for one side and uh, to make your customer acquisition, uh, your customer acquisition, <laughs> and is there a difference between customer acquisition and building a community? For you, so it's not uh, there is no really no difference. Uh, actually, what I think is that um, I, I love the CEO of Capitain Train, which is not a C2C business, was was saying you, we shouldn't talk about uh, user experience but shopping pleasure if you have customers, and we do have customers, and I think. With C2C, we, we do direct transactions between people, and this is a cause for happiness. They, people like it. So there is really a shopping pleasure, and from since customers, they have a pleasure in shopping. Renting a car before was a pain in the ass, now it's nice. It's you just walk there, uh, you are welcome to, to the car, so it's nice. And then it creates a community because people are happy about the experience. And I think you don't need to, to, to see the two things uh, separately. We aim at, shop, uh, at nice shopping experience, great uh, transactions and this creates a community because the, the people they, they want to share about this, they want to discuss, they want to make suggestions because they feel that uh, it's really something uh, innovative. Do you think all uh, your customer or the member of your community um, feel inside your community or did you decrease your other community or did, did those uh, customers are uh, conscious to be part of this community? Conscious to be part of this community. I didn't understand the question. Yeah, because I, because of my bad English. Sorry. Uh, I try again. Um, many entrepreneurs say we have a community of uh, 100 people. We have a community of uh, 2,000 people, etc. But in fact, when you ask a user of Airbnb, those users of Airbnb feel uh, a member of the of this community. Do, do you do you understand? Do you understand what I uh, what I say? I think so, yeah. Like, like for us, for driving, they definitely feel uh, that, they are, that they are part of something and they contribute to, to on, on social media and they send us a lot of feedback. We, we, we don't, for example, uh, like, like all these websites, uh, people have to rate each other after the end of the transaction. And we, we don't uh, like send reminders for that, but still we have 75% of people doing this. So it means that they feel that their contributions mean something to the, to the rest of the community. Okay. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Joel. Joel, I, I, let's go for Joel. No, I was just going to say that um, we, we aim every member of the community and community to 
to be either participating in some form, whether as a client, whether as a host, whether as a ambassador, as a, as a tester. So when we talk about building the community, it's building the community, but for us it's building the client base at the same time. So there's no distinction between one to build a community and one to build a client base. It's the same, the same uh, outcome for us. Yeah, uh, talking about community, uh, I was talking about money. Now I'm going to talk about values. I think um, community means values, sharing uh, the values of the company. There, um, there's a, a marketing operation that we launched uh, last year and we launched it uh, last month for the second time. It's called the World Tour of the Locals. And we really invest uh, our marketing budget in our community. And, um, and they were not customers. I mean, some of them were customers. But uh, the majority majority was not uh, were not customers, and we um, have multiplied by five our uh, candidates for these virtual locals in just uh, one month compared to last year. We have uh, collected two hundred thousand likes just for on um, our page of the world tour, and I think that. Um, we were talking about the differences between customers and community. Um, for, for that operation, they were really um, involved in the operation because they, they wanted to, um, to uh, share their profiles. We are talking about Facebook. It's the ego that is talking really with the community. You want to share your photos, you want to share your articles, you want to share your videos. Uh, you want to um, you want to be important, so it's I think it's really the key factor. It's the self, it's the ego, and uh, that's why it's uh, it's it has been a success this version because everybody would put uh, their photos, their articles, and their videos, and uh, and uh, three of them are going to uh, win a, a world tour. So that's the main difference, I think, between customers Thanks. and me. Thank you very much. Um, now, let's back on yourself, especially. Uh, can you um, explain what is a typical day for an entrepreneur uh, in, a, in a young startup like yours? Yes. What do you do in the morning and during the afternoon? And especially, what's your, um, your next challenge? Uh, yes, Paula, what's that? Uh, I spend uh, about a third of my time or a bit more working on products, so product improvement. I do a lot of copywriting, so I think the, all the text, I like to do this a lot. I think there is a great uh, return on investment, writing great copy on the, uh, on the website. So sometimes uh, a good text uh, with uh, not too long, really sharp, is better than a complicated feature. So I'm doing a lot of this. And then uh, we are, since we are now 15, I'm spending quite a lot of time uh, with each of, uh, of the team members, not in an organized way, but doing a bit of uh, marketing, a bit of communication, a bit of uh, everything. Then you still have all the, the, the worst parts, a bit of accounting, legal, uh, administration, uh, which I hate. Um, and, and yeah, I spend a lot of time uh, uh, recruiting. Uh, it's, it, I think it's very, to me, it's, it's probably the hardest thing uh, I had to learn. Um, I'm spending uh, may, yeah, maybe sometimes 25% of my time when we are recruiting uh, just doing this. Uh, so if you find a job, you can apply at uh, a yeah. But since I take a lot of time, it means you, you have to wait a bit. To get the <laughs> no, but I, I think it's absolutely strategic, it's the number one role of a uh, of a CEO is to make a good uh, recruitment. Uh, and often you think you're wasting your time because until you found the right person, you are nowhere. Uh, but uh, it's, I think it's absolutely essential. If, if you don't miss that point, then the rest uh, should go fine. Philippe, what's uh, your typical day? There, there's, there's not a lot to add. I mean, um, <laughs> I try, I'm basically hiring a lot. I'm, I'm getting a lot of user feedback. I'm trying to build a community, and the rest of the time I'm spending on product and uh, product and on team. So um, if you, um, I was I'm 
when I'm interviewing people and I ask them what they want to do and uh, what they what, what kind of what kind of interview uh, do you do jo for job interviews? Yeah. Uh, it's basically if you if you slice up the CEO role in like the first year, you will probably have like five jobs, and uh, the the goal is basically at the end of the year or at the end of four or five years, to basically only have one job. Um, and uh, we do everything. And once you build a team into with ten or twenty people, I mean, um, you you're running a lot from A to B. So first year is just product, and then afterwards it's team. Sorry. <laughs> so for me, coming from um, a corporate background to into entrepreneurship. The key difference was that rather than just being responsible for one function and having a set defined day and, and tasks, you're suddenly you're doing everything. You're, you, especially when you start off as a small team, which I'm sure everyone everyone does start off in that in that way. You're doing you're doing the marketing, you're doing the PR, you're doing the administration, the hiring, the managing, the photography. The, you go through all those all those phases. Um, as you said, the, the aim is within a few years to to really get specific about what you're doing. But to begin with, it's you're you're spreading yourself very thin and trying to uh, trying to cover all bases. And like I did, because uh, you have been an entrepreneur for maybe uh, a longer time. Now, what's your typical day uh, four years uh, after your launch? Actually, I've been an entrepreneur for six years. Sorry. And I think um, I'm taking some vacation, but even in on vacation, I'm just a, a, a great, the greatest geek I've ever seen. I think I I I, I cannot manage to, and that's a, a work that I have to do on myself. I I just cannot disconnect. I always have my iPhone with me, uh, with computer. Switch it off. Yes, I have to switch switch it off. Um, as um, as we have raised some funds, uh, we need to um, make happy our investors. So, <laughs> so that's our major challenge, and um, we need to measure uh, all our KPIs, uh, key performance indicators. We need uh, to work with our team to really spend some time with uh, each member of the team. Um, to to uh, organize one-to-one uh, -one, uh, meetings with uh, with the middle uh, managers. So that's basically uh, what I'm doing. I'm also uh, managing the PR and uh, and uh, meeting some uh, my techs to uh, write the specifications. Um, I think the, the the key factor, one of the key factors of su success is people is uh, your collaborators is spending time with your collaborators because when you communicate well with them then you organize well your your company and then you put into action your tasks so you execute well too thank you uh, let's talk about uh, money now because uh, finally it's probably the most important thing after the people uh, um, it's money so can you remember to everybody what's your business model Please, in uh, 30 seconds, uh, Pauline. Uh, we take a 30% uh, commission on the rentals, and with, these, uh, with this commission, we pay the insurance. So it means every car rented out on, our, on Drivey is uh, insured by our insurance, so the, the owner is not uh, exposed to any trouble. So that's 100% only commission. Philippe? I have no business model. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> uh, 15 percent commission and the same insurance for insurance for hosts. 50? 15 percent on every meal, on every dinner. And I get it. Okay. So basically, is a volume business model. It means uh, the more you have customers, the more you earn money. Uh, yesterday we had um, a panel about how to raise your critical mass. Uh, maybe you can give. Little, mm, can bo sorry, you can, we can go a little, bo a little bit more deeper into this problematic and uh, how do you reach this, uh, this critical mass and how many customers do you need to, be, to earn money, to already earn money? 
put it. Uh, <clears throat> so we just we just came back from a competition um, in the US where the key question for us was how do you turn this business model into something that you can you can scale across internationally because I think all of us are working so closely with people um, and investing so much time in developing those personal relationships that it's it's uh, it's difficult to imagine doing the same thing. Scale, scaling the same thing in every country. And I think that's the key challenge for any business in collaborative consumption where uh, trying to find a way to scale those relationships and those partnerships internationally across different markets. <coughs> and do you manage to, to create partnerships in B2B, for example, in order to, to find a second business model? Sorry, can you can you find a second business model in B2B, for example, or, I don't know? I think, uh, I think the approach that we, we, we're going to take is that uh, every market is quite distinct, and uh, every market has, has different demands and different regulations, and um, it's about going market by market at this point, rather than one model that fits all. Uh, Paulin or Magali, do you want to add something about this? We still have 10 minutes, so if you have any questions about entrepreneurship, please feel free. Yeah. <coughs> Hello, my name is Jerome. I would like to know what did you learn from your failures? All right, my biggest failure, um, why own it, um, is on whyown.com now. It used to be on whyown.it because I thought it was an amazing name. Uh, nobody understood that it was a domain. So whenever you have a great name for a URL, don't do IT or .me or .tv. Nobody understands what you're doing. Always go for com if you're in France. Stay with fr if you're wherever. Always go with a domain in your country or .com. Very good advice. <laughs> Plus, a .it domain costs more than a .com domain. <laughs> My name is Elsa, thanks for sharing uh, your business. Um, I wanted to know if, uh, since you are doing some collaborative business, uh, you had some collaborative, collaborative mind spirit when making your business, like when preparing it, I'm not doing the, always the same entrepreneur way, um, I'm doing my business and uh, sharing with people. Have. Yes, uh, we uh, at the Casa we have um, participatory management. So again, I'm going I'm going to talk about collaborators, but I think it's the key uh, for any uh, success uh, for any company. And uh, we have a vertical management, not a horizontal one. So we really. Um, try to um, get uh, uh, any feedback from our community, but also from uh, our collaborators. And we also um, go out a lot, and uh, we tend to have a global view. We tend to deta detach ourselves from, from uh, our business, from the day-to-day from the -day -day business. And we do that um, by gathering, by getting together, um, we get together uh, every every week. Uh, we do uh, uh, kayak. We uh, we go and we, we dance together. We we are going to get together and and then uh, it's it's a good way to really uh, think uh, globally about your business and taking into consideration your collaborators. So yes, it's collaborative every day. It's not just one thought, it's the collaborative thoughts. And just, just another point that might touch on the early, early question as well was um, the biggest lesson or the biggest change in the collaborative work that we're doing is that the community and the clients and the hosts that we have actually become part of the company because all we're doing is providing a platform for them to, to find their own success, to make their own, to earn their own money, to, to create their own brand. And uh, so I think more and more if you can empower your users and your community to, to love the product and to understand the product and the brand, then they can become your biggest uh, employee and the cheapest.
Philip, you are taking that again? Yeah, I'm thinking about making my uh, users shareholders of the company. Um, but uh, for me, it was I had I had a, my first startup, and I was running for three years without any holidays, and uh, taking a gap for three and a half weeks, sleeping at my friend's place in Cape Town for no money and nothing. That was basically the most collaborative consumption thing I I've have done, or I would have done at that point. And then the idea came across: Hey, it would be nice to live without money and just take advantage of everything your friends already have and give them whatever you have. Um, and then from there on, being like a, a founder, you, talk, you always talk to people about your idea. And I believe that you can only succeed with a good idea if it's your own idea and your passion, because copying something that's already there um, will never give you like, will never motivate you to stay up uh, day and night and receive work for what you believe in. That's a uh, great advice. Um, maybe Pauline, in order to finish, what can be your um, your advice for all these entrepreneurs or future entrepreneurs? If you have to give one advice before before we finish. No, just be very. Uh, if you if you are starting, the team is uh, extremely important. So don't, don't hire people too similar. Don't work with people who are too similar to, to you. Work with people who are totally uh, different uh, uh, different to you, but share the same love for products. So for me, it's, we are very based on product. And I think the love for product, but very different uh, specialties makes it work. Any more questions before we finish? Can I ask Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. I would say that uh, the, the main mission of an entrepreneur is to solve problems and to, to have uh, that uh, good positive mind, um, a creative thought, and to communicate uh, these thoughts to, uh, to your community and your collaborators because they feel it. And uh, you're going to have a lot of people who are going to tell you that uh, you're not going to succeed and you have to hang it there, you have to believe in your idea, you have to, to, to manage to uh, uh, transmit those values to your collaborators. And um, I think there's um, a phrase um, that I like, it's uh, that the losers find excuses and the winners are going to find uh, solutions and answers. And I like this phrase. Um, my name is Julian. The question is for um, uh, Philip. You say you don't have any business model yet. You got cost to run your startup. So where the money is coming from? Uh, I have two rounds of angel funding. I basically, I was lucky enough that I had a first company which went very well. Um, so people believed that I could do it again. And so I just came up. I showed. I basically showed him a prototype. Said that's my idea. What do you think? And every second said, I would like to give you money. Um, and <laughs> it's very, it's, and, and I basically, I started the company out of another company. And the biggest question was, will you, will you, if it fails, will you come back to your old company and run this? Or will you go and stick for this forever? And they basically bought my commitment um, and have a share of my company. And that's how it went. But it was, very lucky because it wasn't the first time. Um, and we'll see how, uh, how the next round will go. What? Okay. After that, at some point, I will make money and will pay my employees with this. But for the moment, I have like a bank account full of money from investors. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm solving a problem here. and. And I have the investors that believe in me solving this problem. I want people to spend less money on products and more money on things they like. Um, and that's basically the idea. And the idea is of making money in about four or five years' time with this, uh, but not for the moment. Exactly. Build a product that works, get a million users that love your product. And then find a way maybe to make some money with this. But for the moment, if I, for instance, do a, if I do a revenue model on, for instance, food, and the average order value is 
let's say, 20 euros for a dinner, and I have about 100 users, um, it won't pay the cost of, of the employees. Okay, many of you have uh, very similar or uh, complementary uh, communities, clients, and customers. Uh, so my question is, uh, are you sometimes uh, having partnerships or collaborating with uh, competitors, direct or indirect competitors, or just other companies that are also active in the uh, collaborative consumption? Anybody? I'm collaborating with everybody who ever wants to do something, just write me an email. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the, the biggest opportunities for this new movement is the, the fact that everyone's building their own communities. And uh, it's, I think it's a challenge between all of us to find a way to work together because we're all looking for the same person who's open to these ideas of sharing. If, if someone's on Airbnb, they're going to be wanting to do the same thing with a car and the same thing with a meal and share all these things. And it's about uh, finding a way to work together because uh, it's the same community and it doesn't make sense that they're all distinct in these silos. Um, so it definitely in the future it's something that we'd love to do. It's, it's basically what uh, WeShare is doing is saying to the people using one service that they, are, they belong to something and that they can use all these services. So I think it's, it's the best, uh, it's the best uh, possible solution to, to the question you were mentioning. We're collaborating with uh, some companies here, and thanks to WeShare, that's true. Uh, we are collaborating with d -Ways, with uh, Blood Black Car, uh, with some uh, companies in, in the travel industry. And, uh, and it is true that uh, it is thanks to WeShare that uh, we've known these companies. So yes, we're doing it. And I have the director of the partnership right here, so if you want to... Uh, make a partnership with Vidikasana. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dan, the founder of PeerBuy.com. Um, I have a dream. I have a dream of uh, creating a world that's more personal and creating a world that's more sustainable, uh, of bringing people together, making uh, connections between people that didn't exist before. Are you, are you, I didn't hear a lot about the, the passion that's driving you guys today. Is this a, just a business? Or are you also passionate about what you're doing? Um. <laughs> for us, for example, I don't know who was saying we are trying to solve a problem. Our problem is uh, car overpopulation and uh, under optimization. And to me, it's a fantastic uh, challenge that can leave. Uh, if you solve that problem, it can really be remembered in history even because it's, it's really a huge problem. So definitely. We are not, I, I, for example, if I was wanting to, to just work for money, I think I would do something else. So definitely, uh, this is, this is the, 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 the main goal. Mine is purely, poorly, uh, I can't even speak English anymore, but mine is only to solve the problem to see my friends more, and that other people have the same uh, experience. So um, I believe that we live in a time where we hardly have any time to do anything but work and uh, maybe shop. And I want people to buy less and see their friends more often. And I think there's a lot of people live in the city are in the same, especially in the city, they don't see each other for a long time or for a couple of months, even so, because they're so in their, in their world. And I want people, the product, borrow a product from a friend is just an excuse to see a friend again and have a dinner with them. And that's basically the problem I'm solving. And it's pure passion. Otherwise, I would make some money and probably build a transaction built model on this. All, all we're about is uh, disrupting the restaurant industry, which has operated for so many years without competition. And uh, business like Eat and Company here, I think this it's the same vision. It's about offering an alternative to the restaurant industry, which um, it's creating a new, new category of dining from just eating at home, eating <coughs> out. It's, it's the third option now. And that's all that drives us, is about offering this alternative. Uh, I'm going to give you another phrase. I, I love this phrase. It's uh, the philosophers inspire me. It's uh, find a job you love and you, you never have to work a day in your life. So it's exactly, it's a phrase from Confucius. It's exactly what uh, I've been trying to do with Ben Casa. I'm passionate about my job and I'm trying to um, 
to uh, make of my job a, an ideal uh, a, a life uh, that would be ideal for uh, my collaborators too. Um, it took me four, four years before uh, earning money, so I think that uh, I would have switched job if uh, I wanted just money. And 33% uh, of uh, the collaborators are associate, are, are uh, shareholders, and, uh, and they are also my friends. And, uh, and we're all passionate, and I think it's uh, also the, the success, it's the, the passionate team. So, yes. Is there a way for entrepreneurs to share their skills and uh, experiences? Well, out here I cannot uh, um, not talk about uh, Union, Union Web um, because Pierre is the secretary of Union Web. Union Web is a network of entrepreneurs. Uh, I created Union Web because I didn't have any network um, six years ago. And uh, we need uh, networks to find the, the good uh, skills, the good uh, programmers, the, the funds to solve our problems. So I'm not, uh, I'm not from Associé Entrepreneur. I didn't uh, have a great uh, degree, but uh, I needed to find uh, that network. It took me years. So now that's that's why we are um, developing that network to um, to find good uh, good skills and the, the right people to not just um, lose our time. So feel free to discover any other. Yeah, it's free. It's a okay. federation. Thank you very much, all. Uh, thank you very much, everybody.